My Families are a problematic subsection of family vloggers who also exploit their children for views, but instead of living in a 12 bedroom McMansion with a closet the size of an average New York apartment, Welcome to the Royalty Palace! Van Life Families, they trade their comfortable houses in the suburbs to live in a 16 foot camper van alongside their very many children. These are my four kids. And you have five, six, six kids. kids. I'm Mel, this is Luke, Cohen, Rory, and Josie. The typical number of children that van life families tend to have is usually around three. But in rare cases, such as the one that I'm about to show you, there are 10 living, breathing children living inside a camper van alongside their two parents. I always sleep in the trailer. <laughs> this is where the little girls sleep. It used to be a table, but it converts into a bed. Here's the couch and Noah's sleeping on it. Here's where Enoch sleeps. Wait, is that child raw dogging the cold, hard floor? You couldn't have gotten him like a, like a little blow up mattress or like a yoga mat or even like a blanket to put under him, no? No, I'm just wondering what poor little Enoch do to deserve such cruel punishment. Surely the rest of Enoch's siblings are also sleeping in horrible conditions, right? Here's Elijah. He has a top bunk. Down here are Pearl and Naomi. Um, could poor little Enoch squeeze between Pearl and Naomi? That's like a pretty big bed for just two little girls. Like he doesn't take up much room, I promise. Here's where Josiah sleeps. Oh, we got another one. I really hope there's like a rotation between the kids and the parents of who like gets to sleep on nice comfy mattresses and who gets to sleep on the cold hard floor because if it's just Josiah and Enoch, well, that's pretty cruel. Also like, what are these names? Here's where Candle Wax is sleeping tonight. And here's Asbestos sleeping in the kitchen that converts into a bed. And this is where our 1996 Volkswagen Subaru is sleeping tonight. I can't believe we're not even done yet, okay? There's still a few members of the family left. Uh, so let's see how the rest of them sleep in this little camper van. So this is where Moses sleeps. This is where mommy and daddy sleep. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, of course mommy and daddy get a big old plush mattress. It also appears that they have their own room, which like makes a lot of sense since they have to keep making more kids to add to their traveling family band. Oh, <laughs> I didn't mention that. <laughs> Yes, put those little money drainers to work. The children, they yearn for the mines. The mom actually revealed that the children performing and busking is actually like their main source of income and a lot of people on TikTok got very angry. This is not a childhood. This is so embarrassing. As a mother, she should have these kids taken away from her. I'm so glad my parents didn't make me pay for my hobbies as a kid and I just got to enjoy being a kid. I don't know, I grew up doing music. All of my friends used to busk and be in bands. So I don't know, it's not really that big of a deal for me. And also like lessons are extremely expensive, especially for 10, 10 kids. Oh, so the, the only thing that I personally have a problem with is the fact that Enoch is sleeping on the cold hard floor. And after receiving like an insane amount of backlash, this is straight abuse. I saw the kid on the couch and was like, damn, that's rough. And then I saw the literal child on the floor. Personally, I think mommy and daddy should sleep on the floor. The family miraculously found something for him to sleep on. Oh, <laughs> so you found a blow up mattress after you were bullied about it on TikTok. Interesting. <laughs> So this is arguably the worst case of van lifestyle living. But luckily, this family does not live in the van full time. They do have a house, thank God. They just use the van for like part-time to full-time travel since the kids are all homeschooled. So what about the families that do live in RVs full time. You know, the ones that sold the nice little cozy houses in the suburbs, you know, quit their stable jobs and stable incomes and uprooted their kids' social, educational lives because Gary over here had a midlife crisis. Gary should have really, you know, bought a sports car or had an affair with his secretary, you know, like 
normal people do? No, Gary chose to buy an RV. Thanks, Gary. Anyway, <laughs> where do their kids sleep? That's a creepy thing to ask. <laughs> Coming back, we've got our bathroom with flushing toilet. Then we have one bunk for each of our kids and a walk-in shower. For all the people in the comments who are saying that these kids sleep in coffins, <laughs> coffins are bigger than that. Also, dead people, they don't have to sleep next to the toilet. <laughs> Well, I'm sure the parents are also struggling for, you know, space and comfort. This is mine and Kyle's clothes. Coming back, here's our bedroom. We've got plenty of storage for us. Yeah, that is a lot of storage for just you. <laughs> the parents actually received so much negative backlash over the fact that they had so much space versus the kids. You're joking, right? Y'all got a giant queen size bed while they sleep in a shelf. How lucky they have a shelf to share. The parents actually decided to renovate their entire van to give the kids more space. Let's go. Check out what we did now. Each kid has their own amazing room. They have tons of headspace and each bunk has its own TV. Oh, and as a nice treat, they get to pick their own curtains. Yay. Once we got back to the bus after the remodel, we wanted the kids to feel like it was their space. So we allowed them to pick out their own custom curtains. That way they had all the privacy they wanted and they could feel comfortable all the time. No, I get it. Instead of giving the kids, you know, a stable life with four walls and a door, you gave them shelves with a curtain. No, I get it. Kids are second class citizens. And I'm sure they won't remember this when, you know, you're old and they have to decide what nursing home to send you to. Welcome to your new home, mom. Wait, this isn't my own room. There's other people here. No, this is your own room. Look, there's a curtain. What about a window? A window? Why would you need that when you have a TV. It also makes me wonder, would the parents still renovate the van if they didn't receive all of that negative backlash and attention? Hmm. But for what it's worth, their three young kids are still, you know, fairly young and don't require as much, you know, space or privacy as, for example, like a teenager would. And there are a lot of van life families who travel with teenagers. <laughs> full time. So what does their space look like? Here is Addison's loft area. So this actually was originally two different lofts that we knocked down the wall that was right here. So, so she was able to have more space. She turned her bed a little bit. And then on this side over here, she's got her bookshelf and like a bag or a container of blankets, her dry erase board, and it's just some of her like art supplies and some decorations. Now this might not look that bad to you. So just wait until you see the teenager inside that crawl space they call a room. Oh wow, well. <laughs> that is so much space. You really spoiled them, didn't you? They were so spoiled for room that all they wanted was to rent a hotel room for their birthday. For Addison's 15th birthday, the only thing they wanted was to go to a hotel. If that doesn't scream, I want four walls and a door and some goddamn privacy. I don't know what does. And let me guess, once again, the parents have, you know, their own room with a big ass bed instead of a yoga mat for a mattress. Here's our master bedroom. We have a washer and a dryer and my husband has also turned our dresser into a work area for me So I have a desk now as much as space and privacy is an issue for van life families I am willing to look past it since I shared a room with my sister until I was 11 and my parents slept in the living room on a pull-out bed So I get it. I understand but my sister and I had you know school social activities We had sleepovers and stable friendships and we did not have a camera shoved in our faces 24 7. And even today, as a full-time content creator, I keep a huge part of my life extremely private. And I get to choose what goes out there. You know, I have full control. But these kids, they don't. Like, there are certain things that you just don't need to share with the public. Like, your kid cleaning a toilet. Then all of the kids do a chore every day. Grace's is to clean the small bathroom. <sighs> Like, if there was a video somewhere out there of me cleaning a toilet, do you know how embarrassed I would be? Hey, what you doing? Um...
Nothing. I'd also like not want millions of people to see me get in trouble. Last night, Molly chose not to do her chores. And if our kids don't do their chores, they have consequences. Molly can't have any of her technology today, and she's got to get them done before going outside and playing. Again, this is like so embarrassing. That kid is gonna grow up absolutely despising you as an adult. Last night, mom pooped her diaper and didn't tell us and it went all over the sheets that I just washed. So she has to do all of her chores today before she gets to go to bingo. Listen. I'm a true believer that social media is just like not a place for kids. And family vloggers, they should just not exist. I mean, that's why we created such hardcore labor laws surrounding children in Hollywood. Look at how some of them turned out. I don't doubt that some of the van life or family vlogger kids are gonna turn out exactly the same way. And if you actually listen to your kids, I think you'd find out that they don't actually enjoy this lifestyle. And I have proof. I am a teen in a full-time RV living vlogging family and I can't effing stand it. I'm gonna leave out any identifying information as I am a minor, so bear with me. I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate being homeschooled. I hate not being able to maintain a social life. I have online friends, but it's not exchangeable for a true social life. I hate having so little privacy. I hate having to pretend to be happy with this. I hate living in a sanctuary, not a home. We travel full-time. I know, I know, it sounds like a dream. I thought so too, but it's an effing nightmare. It's hard to enjoy anything with a camera over your shoulder at times. Numerous times we've stopped at places just for my mom to get out and take her little videos and family photos and then right back in we go. On the road to the next stop. 90% of our time is spent in the actual RV, which is living hell in its own right. I just want a private, normal life, but no, they had to ruin it with their crunchy way of parenting, lugging us around I have siblings. Everywhere they please. I don't think my parents care about my happiness. As long as I look the part and smile for the camera, they couldn't care less of an F how I feel. They guilt trip. Say if I don't help with my siblings or help with the videos that will go broke and it'll be my fault. It's all fake by the way. Not what I meant when I said I wanted to take up acting. I'm frustrated all the time. I'm tired all the time. I'm bored all the time. Please stop supporting these channels. Stop buying into it. It's ruined my life and I can't say anything about it. The comments make me effing sick. I know it's inspiring a lot of families to consider the same. The more this blows up, the more lives get crushed like mine. I cannot plead with you enough. Now, I cannot confirm exactly who this was written by, but allegedly it was deduced that it was Addison from Family of Nomads. You know the ones that made her sleep in an air vent? Addison has actually been through a lot with their family, and they actually ended up being hospitalized over a mental breakdown and an eating disorder during this time. Now, why do I know this very private and sensitive information? Well, <laughs> their mom shared it twice. Addison has struggled with their mental health for many years. Addison is currently back in treatment and won't be in her content during this time. We know that many of you have questions, but to protect Addison during this time, we would like to ask for privacy on this matter. How about you log off social media, don't post private information about your child, and go and take care of them. You do not need to announce that you're taking time off. We need privacy. We need privacy. Are you sure you need privacy? Kind of sounds like you need attention. And listen, I'm all for mental health and eating disorder awareness if it's shared by the person going through it, you know? It was never the mom's story to tell. Now something so, so private is out there for millions of people to see and judge them for it. On top of that, the parents had the audacity to use their kids' eating disorder for a brand deal. As a parent, keeping social media from our kids is almost impossible. We can have all the conversations with our kids, but we still cannot protect them from what they will see. Dove research actually found that 51% of people ages 14 through 17 have been exposed to content encouraging restrictive eating or disordered eating behaviors. Our family has personally been affected by disordered eating triggered by viewing social media, and it is important to our family to understand more about how to continue to protect our kids and spread awareness for change. Dove is raising. You know the best way to protect your kids from social media? Not posting them on there. Don't give strangers a reason to comment on their bodies. They are way too young to have to read hate comments and know how to deal with them. Kids deserve privacy, safety, and a decent place to live, and van life parenting takes all of that away. 
Honestly, I could spend like another hour talking about how problematic van life families are. So I am gonna do a part two because I found the worst van life family. Now I'm telling you, this is like beyond anything that you've ever seen. So make sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.